So as you can see, while I am gone this week, towards the end of the week, we're going to work on reviewing over the Pythagorean Theorem, um, just reminding ourselves what it is, how it works, and then how we can use it. Um, watch the video. Take good notes. This is something we've seen in the past. This is something that you have learned about before. Just do a little refresher. Big time eighth grade pause skill, so definitely want to be paying attention to that idea. Um, real quickly in your notes, some stuff to get down is some triangle vocabulary, particularly right triangles. We're talking about right triangle. The hypotenuse, if you remember that word, check your spelling. The hypotenuse is the side opposite of the right angle. And so if I identify the right angle down here in this triangle is, is right here, opposite of that would be our hypotenuse. Um, the adjacent sides, the two adjacent sides, are called legs, the two legs. And they're, they're interchangeable. So we have two legs and one hypotenuse with any right triangle. Um, just make sure we got our vocabulary down because that's a huge part of the Pythagorean theorem. Hopefully, as you even noticed on the title slide and definitely as you see on the next slide, which sides are the legs and which side is the hypotenuse has a lot to do with how the Pythagorean theorem works. Uh, quick reminder, A and B are always legs when we're talking about the Pythagorean theorem. So the legs are A and B and the hypotenuse is C. So as you're copying this in your notes, you might also remind yourself that A is a leg and B is a leg and C is the hypotenuse. Um, that's pretty key to understand this. And then we come up with a relationship that we found with right triangles. Um, if we have two legs and we have an hypotenuse and we have a right triangle, we figured out that this relationship exists. If I square the length of the first leg and I square the length of the second leg and I add those together, I'd get the, the length of the hypotenuse squared. Or what you have seen before, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, sometimes you see some different variations of that. Other ways you might see this written. Uh, hopefully we remember from our algebra skills that these all mean the same thing. I could say c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And then we could even do some solving in different things. I would actually find out that a squared um, equals c squared minus b squared. Some different relationships up there. Um, big idea that you always want to remember is we're squaring those lengths. And so when we're using this to solve for, dis for lengths, we also want to remember that we're going to have to find the square root. That's why we would went with the square roots earlier in the week. So let's apply the Pythagorean theorem to, to find this unknown length in inches. Um, I have a right triangle. I have two sides labeled, and then I have one missing. Important to identify what we have and what we don't have. Uh, since these two sides are next to the right angle here, I'm noticing that they are both legs. So I could call this one A and this one B. This right here, the missing side, is our hypotenuse. And so that's important to keep in mind as we try to set up this equation. Go back to your notes, and we see that A squared plus B squared has to equal C squared. So I set up an equation like that. I could say that 10 squared plus 24 squared equals X squared. And because we're missing that hypotenuse, we can just put this down. Um, then I'm just going to have to solve for X. Uh, knowing what we know about square roots, knowing what we know about exponents. So 10 squared is 100. 24 squared, that's 24 times 24, gives me 576. And that's equal to x squared. Still trying to get x by itself. Solve for x. Notice I could simplify this right here. And we know that x squared, the length of hypotenuse squared, equals 676. Last step to solve for x, then, to get rid of the power of 2 is to take the square root. If I take the square root on one side, I have to take the square root on the other. We're using inverse operations, just like we always have, to isolate the variable on one side of the equation. We know, from what we've talked about, every positive number has two square roots, a positive and a negative. Technically, x could be a plus or a minus 26, right? But we're talking about the length of the hypotenuse. We're talking about the length of the triangle. We know this has to be a positive 26. And because we're talking about inches, we're going to have our label of x equals 26 inches because 26 is the square root of 676. One way of applying uh, the Pythagorean theorem there for missing side length. Another look at an example here. Now we're talking about centimeters. Now we're talking about a different looking right triangle. And I want you to notice, and this one's even labeled for us, but notice we actually have the hypotenuse here. We know that the hypotenuse is 25. We have one of the legs is 20, and we're missing that other leg. So this equation is going to look a little different. It might look something like b squared plus 20 squared equals 25 squared. Okay, It's not always the two numbers squared added up together to find that missing side. Because remember, the idea of the Pythagorean theorem is always the two legs squared add up to the hypotenuse squared. So here's my equation. Um, and now I'm just going to try to go about solving it. Um, so I'm taking these to their powers. I'm going to try to get b by itself using inverse operations and the cover-up method. Whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. And then again, when we get to this point, we know that b is not 225. That doesn't make sense. b is the square root of 225. We've got to take the square root of both sides. Square root of 225 is plus or minus 15. But again, we know that doesn't make sense. b would have to equal 15 centimeters. Um, so there's two examples of finding missing side lengths. Uh, one other way that we might approach these problems is I might ask you, do, does the triangle with the given side lengths form a right triangle? We don't know the angle measures. We don't know anything like that. But we just want to see, OK, if I had a triangle that had these side lengths, would it be a right triangle? It, what we need to understand is the Pythagorean theorem works for all right triangles. And so in order for this triangle to be a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem would have to work. So all I'm going to do is use a little substitution. What I want to see is, does a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If it does, we have a right triangle. If it doesn't, we don't. Substitute in these numbers, put parentheses around them. 
just going to work this out and check and see, did it work, yes or no. Um, 15 squared, we just talked about that one with 225, and we're good. 8 times 8 is 64. Might take you a second to figure out 17 times 17, uh, but this ends up being 289. We're checking this to see if this is true, so 225 plus 64. When I add those up, I get 289. Does 289 equal 289? Well, yes, it does. So is this a right triangle? Yes, it is. If we got two different numbers on each side of the equation, then we would not have a right triangle. So that's just a very real quick review of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, obviously, we're going to see some word problems in different things. Um, you might look at a problem like this and see, okay, a 10-foot ladder is leaning up against the wall, the base of the ladder, yada, yada, yada. What you got to picture is a right triangle relationship. So if I have a 10-foot ladder leaning up against the wall, the first thing I'm going to think is, okay, i got a ladder leaning up against the wall. So here's where we're starting to get this relationship. And then it says the ladder is six feet away from the house. Now we see where we have our right triangle. It's a 10-foot ladder. It's six feet away from the house. And we want to know how far up the ladder or how far up the house does the ladder reach. And again, we can just set up our equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then we're just going to go from here and try to solve this as quickly as we can for your video's sake. Um, trying to get a, a by itself, I have a squared equals 64. Take the square root. Um, a would be plus or minus 8 technically, but I think we all know it can't be negative 8 feet up the house. So A is 8 feet. But So even looking at a way to apply it to a word problem or something like that. Again, make sure we have the Pythagorean theorem in our notes. This is something that is huge on pause and end-of-the-year assessments. Uh, and this is also something that I'll be testing on you next week in class. Um, if you have any questions, go back and watch over the video. Talk to each other. Check your positive reference sheet and work hard. Good luck.